Hello and welcome to another painting video. In this video I'll be painting a Lord of Afflictions, the general of my Maggotkin army. I was looking forward to painting this one and I went all out on the rut fly. Let's get into it, shall we? First I want to tackle the biggest part of the model, which is the fly skin. After priming with Ravebone, I base coat the skin with a watered down Zandri dust. Then I wash the skin with Seraphin Sepia. Next, I layer Usapti bone over all the raised areas of the skin. This I also wash with Seraphim Sepia to make sure the layer color blends more with the base color. Now I will dry brush Usapti bone back on the model. The reason I'm dry brushing now is because I want the color to blend a little bit more instead of becoming a fully fleshed highlight. Now we get to the highlighting stage with Screaming Skull. Next I'm going to bring it all together with a glaze of Plague Bearer's Flesh. I thinned it down with Lamia Median to thin down the color. I want the limbs of the fly to look a bit brighter than the body. Therefore I glaze them with Yandan Yellow. For good measure I'm also glazing the head so it will stand out a bit more. On to the boils. First I base coat them with Scarsnake Green. And then I cover them in Nurgle's Rot. How many times have I said Nurgle's Rot in these videos already? On to the wounds and scars. First I wash them with Karoburg Crimson. To make the wounds look more festering I wash them with Druki Violet. And to really make them stand out I highlight the wounds with Palette's Witch Flesh. Time for some gore. I base coat the entrails with Orc Flesh. I want to make the gore look a little bit different this time. Then I wash the gore with Karoburg Crimson. And I highlight the gore with Skarsnik Green. For a final highlight I use Ogren Camo. And finally I splatter on some Blood for the Blood God for good measure. As this is a big model and not a unit of 10, I think it's fun to go all out here. It is a lot of steps, but I think the skin looks really gnarly and is something you can show to Papa Nurgle. I also tend to avoid the bright green demon skin as shown on the boxes, and this is a little bit more muted. On to the carapace. I decided to make this brown, as it will fit the skin very nicely. First I base coat with Rhinox Hide. And I give it a thick wash of Nuln Oil. I'm going to add two highlights to the carapace. The first one is Mournfang Brown. And the second highlight is Karak Stone. This step is optional of course, but I wanted the carapace to be shiny, so I layer it with some art coat. As you can see the carapace now fits the skin very well. Another option was it to paint it more darker green, but as the rider will also have dark green armor I wanted to avoid too much of the same. For the wings I pre-painted the limbs with the same technique as I did the skin. Then I made sure the wings were white with Wraithbone before adding Athermatic Blue. I then wash all the veins with Drakenhof Nightshade. Make sure you stay close to the veins. Finally I add a highlight of Pallet Switch Flash on the veins. This is quite a challenge to not hit the wings. Because the model was pretty dark, it's good to add some different colors to make it stand out a bit more. 
The wings are a good contrast with the dark skin and carapace, but it still fits the model. Let's give some color to the tail ends and um, grabby bits of the fly. First I base coat them with Black Templar. Then give them a highlight of Administratum Grey. The Stinger was given a base coat of Caliban Green. And they wash of known oil. Next, I highlight the stinger with Cabalite Green. And I add a thick drop of Nurgle's Rot. The drop of Nurgle's Rot really gives the impression that sickly poison is dripping out of the stinger. I also gave the stinger the same color as the plague source of my plague bearers to give some continuity to the army. There are a lot of details on the fly, which I will tackle here. First, the eyes. Give them a base coat of Blood Angel Red. Then, I add a layer of Wild Rider Red to the eyes. Just add a line to the side to simulate light reflecting off the eyeball. To further give the impression of light hitting the eyes, give it a highlight of White Scar. I then added some art coat for good measure. The pelt the saddle is sitting on gets a base coat of Mournfang Brown. And a dry brush of Zandri Dust. To darken up the pelt and to bring the two colors closer together I washed them with Agrax Earthshade. I wasn't really sure how to do the saddle so I decided to keep it nice and simple. First I base coat with Basilicanum Grey. And then I highlight with Administratum Grey. The fangs and the big horn on the saddle are given a base coat of Skeleton Horde. And a highlight of Screaming Skull. The pole and other wooden parts are given a base coat of Wildwood. And a highlight of Baneblade Brown. Now we're mostly done with the fly. Let's have a look at the Lord. First, I base coat his armor with Incubi Darkness. Then I give it a wash of known oil. The first highlight will be Cabalite Green. Followed by a highlight of Ogren Camo. Finally we're going to add dots of Nurgle's Rot and drag the brush down. This gives the impression that the armor is leaking all kinds of weird goo. This is the main color of the army of my Rodbringers. I also use a different shade which I will show you right now. First we base coat the armor with Death Guard Green. And then give it a thick wash of Agrax Earth Shade. Next I dry brush Elysian Green onto the armor and dry brush Ogren Camo after that has dried. To get that dirty armor look, wash the armor with some Reikland Flesh Shade. And give it a highlight of Ogren Camo. A different shade of armor that works really well with the previous armor. Alternatively, you can just get one shade of the armor, but the rod bringers have so much detail, I think it really helps them stand out more if you vary the shades of armor like this. The tabards and skirts of the rod bringers are purple in my army. First, I base coat them with shyish purple. Next, I layer Gene Stealer purple 
to even out the color. And lastly, I highlight the cloth with Slanesh Gray. Now for the parts that will be painted metal. First, I base coat them with Lead Belcher. The brass parts are base coated with Balthazar Gold. Then, I wash all these parts with Agrax Earthshade. And I highlight with Stormhost Silver. Now we need to weather it because this looks way too clean. I dry brush Ryza Rust on the metal. And finally I use Nihilac Oxides to get that verdigris effect on the brass. This is a quick way to paint metal and brass and it works really nicely if you want dirty and worn metal parts. The Lord of Afflictions has festooned his ride with many corpses. Let's give them a coat of paint. This is also a way how to quickly paint some zombies actually. First I base coat the skin with Plague Bearer Flesh. Then I wash the skin with Reikland Flesh Aid to dirty it up a bit more and to get that human skin tone in the mix. Lastly I highlight certain parts of the skin with Creek Khaki. Gore or this nasty tentacle I paint with Volupius Pink. And highlight with Emperor's Children. For the clothes, I'm going to use some contrast paints. The pans are painted with Leviathan Blue. And the shoes with Black Templar. To get a dirty shirt, I paint it with Skeleton Horde. All the straps and leather belts are painted with Gorguntra Fur. Here I paint with Yenden Yellow, but you, of course you can use whichever hair color you want. When all of this is dry, I dry brush with Verizian Gray over the entire corpse. And finally we add some Blood for the Blood God over all the parts that need to be bloody. And here we have the Lord of Afflictions, riding on top of his Rotfly. A truly ghastly model and such fun to paint. The fly especially was quite a challenge on how to paint it, but I think it works very nicely here. Let me know in the comments what you think of my general. And be sure to check out my Instagram account, where I will be posting updates on all of my painting projects. Thanks for watching!